Surviving visits from teams of Buddhist preachers, with a little help from some concealed blades, the wave of Christian missionaries that signals the imminent arrival of an invasion force continued to flow east across Honshu. Yoshishige and Chikaharu lacked this momentum, fighting a large but indecisive battle on the Matsuda's border, and ultimately suing for peace with no ground gained. But that did not mean they could not simply try again when the time was right. Until then, the Otomo continued the business of taxing trade routes to their enormous profit and cementing their rule on the mainland. The Ura trade fleet, which previously had eluded us, was spotted sailing east by some of my own traders, and we began the pursuit. The black ship, while capable of sailing through all conditions and all waters without worry, is no match for a smaller cutter in a race, and so we lost them continually. Each time, however, more ships sailing the other way would inform us that we were still on their tail. Eventually, they halted and we caught up, witnessing not just a fleet, but a flotilla of countless ships, with just as countless a sum of clan banners. Fortunately, our quarry led us away from this strange wooden sea beast, so no foulness came of it. I learned from captured Ura sailors that this flotilla did not belong to any samurai clan in particular. Instead, it was a willing alliance of many clans, supplied from the lordless shores of Noto to their east. The Ronin found ample markets in supplying such a behemoth, and the strange fleet could moor itself without worry for the laws of other clans. One feels quite assured in thinking that this great gathering of ships can only have been orchestrated by Kyoto, and that such an orchestration can only have one end in mind. Hello and welcome back to Barbarian Masters. Right now we're just waiting out the winter and waiting out our peace treaty with the Matsuda. Some nice news comes along, they've actually lost one of their territories to an upsurgent clan. That means we no longer border them on the northern circuit, the northern coast is completely secure. We also learn that over on the islands to the northwest of the map, both the Goto and the So are now building some of the legendary dojo type buildings and once they have have them, no one else is allowed to get them, so that's a tiny bit annoying that they've managed to do that over there, and strange that the two islands seem to be working on mastering the martial arts, I guess it's a nice spot for it since they aren't too disturbed by the wars themselves. I'm having to use my geishas there for spies, because I haven't got the buildings to recruit spies in this area yet, but we'll sort that out soon enough. And we're also going to use the geishas for what they do best, just killing everyone we come across. In this case, there was a monk sitting in a castle for the Matsuda. Our geisha just goes in, unfortunately he had a guard at the door, but we just stab him up and that just seems to go fine. And even though he dies a screaming death on the floor, the monk himself was not alerted to the presence of an assassin outside the door and we actually do get away with killing him there, so that went surprisingly well. Now here's some news that is very useful for me. It may not have come across in this series, but the Saika have been attacking me pretty much every turn. I usually cut it out. They just attack our trade routes and blockade ports everywhere, and we have so many, and they have so many very small fleets, that it's just been a constant hassle dealing with them. And finally they come along asking for a peace treaty after losing dozens of naval battles against us. And they're even willing to switch from being our enemy to being our ally, which we've seen happen before. They actually want to be on our side. They realize we might be the winning clan here. The question was, do I actually want to do this? It might be inconvenient because they're right in Kenai in the main action near the capital. So if they get attacked, I'll get drawn into wars. But I decided to go for that with this little clause added. They have to declare war on my other enemies, the Ura and the Nanbu. This means those annoying Psyker fleets will now be screening my trade ports from the other annoying fleets that are trying to attack them, and that actually saves me quite a lot of time, effort and money as we go on, although I probably won't be showing that in the series. 
now as we reach spring the rampage for our geishas just continues more monks to bring down once all the monks are gone that means our monks will be safe to start converting their lands to christianity and the geishas can just cover them while they continue to do that i did notice though that the amoco seem to be up to something back on the northern coast they've got a ship with a full army inside and they've just landed a monk in our territory so we need to get rid of the monk just to stop him spreading buddhism but the other thing it signifies is that they plan to invade here and they're preparing to do so so we can't really do all that much about it we've only got half a stack in the area it's just a question of whether they'll actually do it their monk went on to demoralize one of my armies although fortunately it was this army with only one unit in it so this doesn't really mean anything it does further cement the idea, though, that they intend to attack us at some point, since they're now starting to do hostile agent actions against us. Demoralizing that army would only help them if they plan to attack it this turn, for example, though I don't think they're in a position to do so. Regardless, even though this monk did have a retainer that uh, decreases his chance of being assassinated, it didn't do him any good when the gay ship comes to town and just stabs him up like so many other enemy agents. So there we go. That's weakened their offensive a bit, but this still got a full stack we certainly need to keep an eye on that and we'll just keep bringing down the generals for the Matsuda here they've got lots of generals between these two armies so we'll just keep assassinating them and I seem to get very lucky the assassination was never failing I just kept doing it over and over again through all these agents and generals and it kept working so going very well indeed denying them all of those relatively powerful Hatamoto units now the Amoco fleet disappeared. I saw another fleet there, but that's not the same one. So I didn't know where they'd taken that full stack. And that stack they have on their island, I think, was there already. They've got that in addition to the one they have in the fleet. So while I didn't know where it was, I decided to just put my main fleet by their islands to intimidate them and watch for any other movements, make sure they can't bring those other forces off of their island without me noticing. And now we're going to assume that they're not going to attack the northern coast and move all of our forces down south because it's almost time to go back into war with the Matsuda, so I need my backup men ready to help out with that. Plus, there's a little plan we can use to dramatically reduce the probability of the Amoco getting up to no good. A gift for you. This head belongs to a man from your island, I believe. You recognize him? Can't say what happened to the rest of him. Hungry mouths in a time of war and all that. Why, Yoshiaki, you truly outdo yourself. I accept your gift with a deep and unerring gratitude. That's more like it. Now, I've got another gift, as it happens. I am willing to let you return home unharmed. What? Am I in the hall of a daimyo, or the den of a ragged bandit? A daimyo, certainly, for I will not harm your body or your mind. I will harm your people. I will order my Nanban ships to destroy your island by fire and by starvation. All it takes is a word. What do you want, honorable lord? I want you to agree that you forced us, via your staunch negotiating skills, to declare another war upon the Matsuda, much to our horror. Not even a gutter child would believe that. Not normally, but you've got rather a reputation for scheming and treachery. Perhaps you were the puppet behind the Ottomo clan all along. An intriguing notion to dilute public opinion, at the very least. It's time for Chikaharu and Yoshishige to make a second attempt at an assault on Numata Castle. This time, the setup actually allows us to go and start a siege rather than being forced to fight a field battle, so that's going to make life immediately much easier. So what I need to do is attack the force that's outside the castle. They run away, not wanting to fight all of my local forces, since the besiegers would not be allowed to reinforce, due to what is essentially an exploit, <laughs> having anything besieging the castle stops units inside from taking part in battles even if the besieging army actually leaves to take part in the battle they still can't come out 
Now I couldn't do this siege assault right away because the army I was trying to get out of the picture was still in reinforcement range so that meant I needed to go after it and take it down. Fortunately I could do this with some cavalry. They drew in Yoshi Shige's army so we've got a pretty substantial force yet the enemy still have some presence on the balance bar so I needed to fight this one myself. We have plenty of numbers so I was able to surround their army with cavalry on both flanks although that said having all these cavalry back here isn't that useful because the enemy army is mostly Yari Ashigaru so we can't really make any brazen attacks there. What I'm trying to do is move our skirmish line up on top of this hill that the enemy were behind so we could shoot down towards them. But the enemy decided to do a classic tactic, send forward one unit on its own to just suddenly charge our lines. So we quickly stopped to start damaging them. I've got some samurai gunners on the right end of my line who I unfortunately forgot to put on fire at rank again so they didn't do all that much damage. But since we have all of the regular archers around the place we can thin this unit out and we actually kill about half of them as they come in and they're going to not fight our whole army on their own. Probably the right decision there. But as they ran away another unit decided to give the same thing a shot charging right at us this time having a tiny bit more luck because they're not going to get shot by my gunners the gunners i had targeted onto some of the enemy's archers but unfortunately these archers while in range were just behind this tiny little ridge that meant my samurai couldn't see them so they started walking forwards and they would have walked all the way up to that ridge to point blank range so they could see them and then attack them fortunately i noticed this before it went really wrong still they're in a bit of a pickle because now the enemy are charging at them and this general advance has triggered the whole enemy army to start becoming active the battle on the front line is getting started. Nothing special there, it's just going to be Ashigaru versus Ashigaru. Here, some of the enemy's pursuing forces all tripped over each other, giving me a nice bit of extra time to get my samurai out of harm's way and charge forward some melee troops to stop the enemy. So that went surprisingly well. It could have been disastrous. Along the rest of the line, what I'm going to do is try and get a tiny bit of a hill advantage by shuffling forward my Yari wall. I think we do just about get a tiny bit of downhill attack there, not really though. But anyway, the Yari wall will be able to hold off the enemy's attack and now we'll start pressing against them with our superior numbers, although quite slowly because those Yari walls walk in a weird shuffly sort of fashion. Now some of the enemy's infantry turned to attack our cavalry on the flanks, perhaps a good idea, especially because I wasn't paying enough attention and here, I ordered my line to fall back but one unit didn't leave, it got drawn into melee as units like to do and I didn't notice this and so now they're fighting against these spearmen and they're going to lose half their men really quickly fighting against Yari Ashigaru. The other cavalry wing is going to have an easier time because I managed to find the enemy's couple of archer units with them and take them down. Plus we can make rear attacks against Yari Ashigaru that are already engaged and that routes them and really you just see everything routing at this point in the battle. Just came down to my cavalry, I finally realised and got them out of there. Fortunately this unit isn't going to stick around since most of the army's gone. Over here we saw a full unit just route, they're not going to take part in the fight at all. If we were playing one of the later Total Wars I might now be forced to actually chase after them and kill them. Fortunately Shogun 2 was nicer. They were very nice back in the good old days CA. They just assume that you could have done it if they're anywhere near you as the battle ends and it just kills them for you back on the strategy map. So we won't have to go chase a few dead units around. We can go right back to our siege. The question is how much does that actually change the balance bar getting rid of all those Yadi Ashigaru? It wasn't a very easy siege to begin with. The enemy have tons of stuff inside the castle, loads of melee infantry. Fortunately not much in the way of ranged infantry so it's easy to get into the castle but then it would be a huge attrition heavy grind to hack our way through unless we could pull some trickery with our own ranged units there. I decided to leave it under siege and see if the enemy came to sally or perhaps reinforce because that might be a tiny bit easier and in the meantime just assassinating there the son and heir to the Masuda clan. They're running out of family members pretty fast I imagine. They are forced to adopt a new son and heir. I think it's one of these guys near the front line who suddenly becomes the uh, son of the daimyo so they're probably pretty desperate and the Matsuda clan itself, the samurai family probably doesn't even exist anymore at this point it's just other families using their name so we quickly storm into the castle that Yoshiaki had under siege I'm going to repair it up this is actually Himeji castle one of the special castles on the map so it gives us extra bonuses compared to normal ones 
I'm going to immediately tear down the Buddhist temple in the area and build the Nanban trade port to get people converted over to Christianity. Plus we need that trade port for our special exports to the Western world. Now I noticed that the clan that had previously overthrown the Matsuda to our east had itself been overthrown, so now it's the Yamana clan out here. And interestingly, they don't have the massive debuff, the alliance with enemy clans thing, so they actually like us, and that's going to allow us to make some pretty sneaky deals. We need to talk about your recent seizure of power, Lord. My family has held claim to these lands for generations, and I could not listen to the calls for me to honor that claim without being moved My lord, we do not care why or how you have done this. What we are concerned by is the lack of respect you have shown to us. I'm sorry, but I do not understand. Of what disrespect do you speak? You sit in the shadow of greatness, Lord Yamana. You owe the Otomo clan for your chance to rise, and now you must grip tightly to it so that you do not fall. What exactly are you proposing? I am demanding that you offer tribute to the clan immediately. In return for, and in proportion to, the dignity of your offer, we shall allow your people to access our markets. I see, I see. I suppose that is the way of things. I apologize for not realizing sooner. How much would be appropriate, in your opinion? There is no price worthy of the Otomo clan's protection. So we ask only that to show your dedication, the price be dear. Right now, it looks like the Matsuda are planning to make a counterattack against Yoshiaki. They've got nearly two armies approaching his position with lots of archers, they've got some gunners of their own, and they've got mangonels. Overall, armies well suited to a castle assault, so it seems that's on the cards. My reserve army isn't in position to help at all, so what I'm going to do is just hide it in the corner here. This might cause the Matsuda to start going north instead, thinking that Mimisaka is unguarded, so that's the hope there but there is one other thing I can do to potentially allow my reserves to take part in the battle after all. I've got lots of agents in the area and we can use them to harass the enemy's army to potentially stop them reaching us this turn. Now by harass I don't necessarily mean do agent actions either, all we need to do is walk into the position from where we could do an agent action and that's already going to have an effect because just being there forces the enemy army to walk around your agents because they count as impassable objects. So by just having lots of agents prepared here, this means the enemy have to go to the north before they can come back down to attack the castle and that might use up enough movement points to stop them from attacking this turn, thus allowing my reinforcements to arrive. So I set that plan up and we'll just see if it works. I could make it even more of a wall using my final geisha, but I decided instead to go for an assassination attempt against their daimyo who was leading the bigger army here because getting rid of him will demoralize all of his troops and just be an overall moral victory for our side to have wiped out their leadership so easily after the last few turns. Daimyos are harder to kill than regular officers, of course. However, the old strip and stab tactic simply can't be overcome. It seems to work out once again, and we take him down. So now the enemy army is going to be paralyzed with fear as their leader suddenly disappears in the middle of the night. They uh, probably are starting to think that maybe the Otomo are up to something. They haven't reacted by sending any agents against my geishas so far. But of course, since we kill all their agents, that might be why they may be very aware that every single person who claims samurai rank is now vulnerable to being killed. So their daimyo is now this guy over here. You can't actually kill all of the family members in another clan, they'll just spawn some more. So at this point, killing more guys is going to be less useful. Now we're going to go back to Yoshishige and Chikaharu now. First, I took out some reinforcements that were hanging around nearby. The enemy's force over to the east there didn't come to attack us. It was in the castle, I think. It just stepped outside as if it was thinking about doing something, but it didn't take any actions. And I decided, let's just go ahead with this castle assault anyway, because we do have an army that's somewhat well suited to it, and their army isn't well suited to defending. They've only got one unit of archers. That means we're going to be able to move around the castle and set up for our attack however we want and use our own archers to weaken them before the battle starts. There you are, my lord. Here I am, general. 
No bow. Sorry, my lord. I've got a lot on my mind just now. Yes, the burden of command must weigh heavily on you. I hope Father knows what he is doing. He just doesn't want you to lose sight of the bigger strategies, Lord. I shall deal with this battle while you focus on clan business. <laughs> shall I just leave then, General? No, my Lord. If it pleases you, I have a use for your men in mind. I can't say it pleases me, nor will it ever, to have my fate decided by you. I can only hope that God is using you to communicate a far more important plan. I, I feel like that could be possible, Lord. I need you to cover the Eastern Bridge and the rivers to the north. The enemy may try to flee, and you must prevent this to complete our victory. So be it. Almost a waste of an army, though, I must say. Send your samurai to aid in my attack. A few extra men will make this far less costly. <laughs> you didn't say please, General. Sorry, sorry, my lord. Please, do whatever you wish, my lord. While I was setting up, the enemy decided to send one of their units of Katana Ashigaru to come and investigate my reinforcement army coming from the east. Perhaps not the best decision, because as I fell back with the cavalry I had baiting them, they were going to be drawn towards an ambush position where I had the rest of my cavalry in waiting. We've got two units of Katana cavalry, specialist anti-infantry units, so now they'll charge in, smash the enemy with a charge bonus, and then once in the melee, have a definitive advantage. Plus, we can hit them with another unit from the back just to make sure there's no chance of possibly losing this fight. Down they go, we annihilate an entire unit in mere seconds, losing only a couple of our own samurai. So that was a good start, now we'll go back to forming up ready to attack. But the enemy have a weapon they can use against us, their mangonels inside the castle can hit us pretty much anywhere near the castle. So as we're forming up, we're taking a bombardment and that shot there landed very close to Yoshishige himself, he's probably not impressed with this situation. So we are going to have to tank that to some extent because we can't really hide from it and get close to the castle. At the same time, they're sending one unit of Katana Ashigaru once again to make a little raid outside of the castle on its own. This time they've spotted my gun troops moving up from the south and they decided to charge them. I was trying to use the guns to snipe the enemy's archers off the walls. Now that's going to be disrupted, but this unit on its own is going to have a bit of a hard time. While the skirmishing doesn't work ideally and they do catch some of the troops into melee, I did have three units behind the guns because I thought this might happen, so I can now attack them with a few Yari Samurai and a ton of Yari Ashigaru. So that's going to be enough to annihilate this unit stuck out here on its own. Their morale breaks pretty much instantly after they join melee and we kill tons of them. So that's another enemy unit down. Things are going well to get started. But it does mean that now that they can see my men out here, they can hit them with the mangonels. So that's a shame, although being in the trees does block some of the hits, so it wasn't all that damaging. And we can quickly go back into hiding so we won't be targeted again. And they'll go back to firing at the far less valuable Ashigaru troops that Yoshishige is bringing from the north. Northeast. To try and minimize the casualties I was taking from this bombardment, I loosened all the troops up and spread them out all over the place so shots missing one unit wouldn't hit another, essentially, and tried to use the trees to some extent to get some cover from them. What I was hoping was to make the enemy fire into the tree, so allowing them to still see my units were there but hoping the trees would block the shots to waste their ammunition. That didn't really work and we did lose a decent number of Ashigaru out there. But what I was really focusing on was was my bow attack that I'm now making on the troops inside the castle. I've moved up a couple of units of bow samurai to start sniping away at the enemy's lighter troops. They've got tons of Katan Ashigaru in here. So the theory is we'll just kill as many of them as possible before attacking. And if we're very lucky, we might be able to get the majority of them and make the attack just a walkover. All depends on the angles and how efficiently our ammunition ends up being used. At the same time, we're making an attack with Chikaharu's archers from the southwest. He had some nice samurai to fire at here, so that's a very valuable target to take out. Even though it's going to use a lot of ammo because they have armor, it's definitely worth it. That will save a lot of lives. 
Now the enemy were a tiny bit proactive here, they actually sent a unit of Katan Ashigaru to drive my archers away, so that stopped me from doing my little plan, however that unit just kept chasing them, and soon they found themselves subject to an ambush just like the unit that came before. This time I had some gunners hidden just across the river who start unloading on these guys, not going to do too much damage at this range and with the enemy's weird formation, but it's not enough it seems to dissuade them from coming to attack us, we've got Tachi Samurai hidden on the other side of the bridge ready to hit them if they do cross. Unfortunately there their mangonel spots my archers and hits them pretty directly but most of the men who were hit survive thanks to their heavy armour. They did cross the river in the end and that's going to prove to be a mistake. We hit them with the Tachi Samurai with some no Daichi Samurai and with the Bow Samurai drawing their swords to come in and charge the enemy's flanks. That unit just disappeared instantly so that was nice. Then they tried once again to drive my gunners back. This time they're sending some of their Samurai out and they very nearly ran past all of my units and uh, would have gotten into the rear of one of my gunner units there. But they got caught on the very corner of some Yari Ashigaru so we'll draw them into a fight. Not a very favourable fight on its own, but the gunners they were chasing can now turn around and just unload volleys into the back of those katana samurai. We'll probably hit a couple of our own men, but that's not really going to be a huge problem considering the fact we're annihilating those katana samurai who would otherwise have killed the men in front of them, so that's a pretty good trade-off right there. And it actually morale shocks them so much that they retreat forwards into the Yari wall and that unit is just wiped out. Another nice powerful enemy asset denied to them, good stuff. Now those archers, who I was trying to snipe with my gunners, eventually got completely annihilated when I just told all of my other archers to fire a couple of volleys at them, and a couple of volleys was all it took. We defeated more than half of them really easily, meaning that we should be able to now have some extra room to manoeuvre, we can walk our units below the wall here without being shot to pieces, that's going to give us extra angles from which to try and shoot more enemies inside the castle and all that, so that's good news. The announcer tells us that we're going to win because we've killed so many enemies inside the castle at this point and we're just going to keep doing that to make the situation even better here. Unloading volley after volley on these Yari Samurai who aren't even facing us, they are defiant but it's not going to help them, they're going to quickly lose the entire unit and we're going to deny the enemy one more unit that might have actually been useful once we come to the melee phase. So all that's left now is a pile of writhing wounded samurai no longer able to fight for the Matsuda clan. Good news for us. But we are starting to run out of arrows at this point and there are still plenty of targets inside that I would like to take down. However, the enemy did something very nice that will end up allowing us to uh, kill lots of them without having to use our archers. First, they charged out tons of units, apparently to go around these samurai here, but they ended up fighting them because they got caught on the edge of them. So that's going to be a tiny fight that won't go all that well for us since there's so many enemies. They started another one over here with another unit of samurai, but we can just run back and get some of our samurai from across the river to deal with that little part of the fight. But now I'm going to bring up Chikaharu's main infantry force to not only get into position to make an attack on the castle, but to suddenly rear attack all of the guys who came out and are now stuck fighting my bow samurai. This attack is devastating. The enemy are going to rout pretty much instantly in the face of this rear attack, and this is not going to be a pretty rout. They rush forwards into the Yari walls and Yari samurai units, and hundreds of enemies will immediately be defeated here. The majority of what they had left in the castle is suddenly killed so now our lack of arrows isn't going to be a problem there's barely anything stopping us getting in at this point and i even managed to essentially win the battle without going inside i kept firing in to rout the, the last few enemy units and the only unit inside the castle was some samurai who i eventually ordered to go in because i thought it might actually be faster than trying to gradually whittle them down but they weren't needed in the end it's a decisive victory and that means the stalemate for chikaharu and yoshishige has finally been broken the Otomo's network of Christian churches was able to ensure obedience from the general population, especially with becoming Christian being the one chance for any former supporter of the Otomo's enemies to escape capture. For the nobility, however, a different approach was needed. They were far more resistant to the promises of Nanban religion, for their own situation was not so wanting. Instead, Yoshishige came up with the idea of sending trusted geisha to perform private duties with high-ranking officials at the clan's expense. 
Thus, the nobility were monitored constantly and regularly left alone with the Ottomans' quiet hunters. That is all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and special thanks to all officially Devon patrons. We'll now be able to make a final push against the increasingly leaderless Matsuda clan in the next episode of Barbarian Masters. 